Welcome back, listeners, to the W Ritz Podcast. We're here with some very special guests. We got Lucas Burt and his brother, JP. I don't know which one is greater and which one is worse. I'm but greater. I'm definitely greater. You guys can decide. Fight but it anyway, out right now. Who's, oh, the, who's the better Burt? Rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> Their dad is the best Burt. Let's, Let's be honest. Let's go. Uh, JP won. He's JP the best won. Burt. The right. scissors over paper. Well, That's true. Listeners, as we begin this podcast, I do have to apologize for something. We're going to start it out on a very oh. sad note. Yeah, I have well. a confession to make. I have to apologize to all of you for something. And he didn't want to make this video. That but, is that is know. truly unacceptable, and uh, I am. I want you to know that it is with a contrite heart and a sad spirit that I tell you all of what happened. Um, mm -hmm. I must confess to all of you, even though it pains me greatly, that I... Um, I am a straight white male. Uh, oh my god! I don't know uh, if I can be on this podcast. I'm not comfortable anymore. Oh my oh, gosh! Uh, I, I am very bro, I sorry. I didn't, that know, I, I didn't know this when I started this with you. I can't. I can't, bro. I am sorry that I you can't. all had to know that. No. I am sorry. You've lied for too long. What else I have you lied about? Uh, a lot of things. A lot of things. Whoa! All right. Well, I can't, anyway, I can't trust this man anymore. Today on the W Ritz podcast, we have some good topics for you. And of course, we have the Burt's on, so it's going to be yes. an, a great episode. We're having yeah. them again. Uh, then, uh, then, use your words. <laughs> We're then. having Lucas on again so soon after his last appearance because you know we felt the we last need, one we was not do a little. Do a little the do last over. one was not up to the the standards. But you know, you got you got to give us some leeway. leeway. I also owe everybody an apology for making that episode the worst episode to date. Well, it's not really your <laughs> fault. Was, we didn't give you enough, like... It was equal responsibility yeah. between you and us. Sure. You know, we, we live and learn. We'll, anyway, we do better. Today on the W Ritz Podcast, we're going to be talking about Jeffrey Marsh, and if you know who he is, I feel bad for you. I don't. We're going to be discussing political ideolo uh, uh, idolatry and a idolatry. number of other interesting subjects that the birds have a lot to say. Oh, yeah. I sure hope so. That's He's right. very knowledgeable on the yes. subject. Yes. Of course. On this, yes, yes, of course. Of course. Yeah, I, yeah. We wouldn't have you on if you weren't. Although, oh, yeah, listeners, I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm going to expose JP here. He just said a couple minutes ago that he has never actually listened to the W Ritz podcast. Oh my gosh, how out of touch! Uh, I, I, I'm out. Of, you're out of time. Uh, well, gotta, we just no, started. You're out of touch. I'm out of <laughs> okay. time. So, yeah, I, I got, got that wrong. Anyway, yeah. anyway. So this this Jeffrey Marsh person that I said um, a minute ago, I, I talked about him. He's a bit of a freak. Um, I really don't know what other word to describe him, um, unless we're talking about a worse one than that. And this Jeffrey Marsh person, he identifies as gender fluid and non-binary and all that. And he's yeah. a, apparently an American speaker and author. Now, mm -hmm. I, I use the pronoun uh, he, him for him. I guess I shouldn't. What are his pronouns? I honestly don't know what he is. He, oh, okay. Uh, he, he looks like a man who likes to wear makeup. To me and crazy ears. So, what does that make him? Uh, it makes him an it. Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah. Wait, man. wait, wait. Yeah. What do clowns do? Oh. Oh. They wear oh. makeup. Uh, they, and wear they wear makeup. Wear makeup. <laughs> clowns. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Exactly. But this Jeffrey Marsh person uh, apparently is uh, someone who offers, quote, daily lessons in generosity and kindness, teaching the public about what it means to be, a tra uh, to be trans, non binary, an ally, and a compassionate human. Now, that was a word salad of good and bad things uh, from the Los Angeles Times, which, by the way, is a pretty sizable paper. Uh, but the New York Times, very trustable. like, d definitely the, probably the most recognizable paper in the U.S., mm -hmm. said that artist Jeffrey Marsh is like a gold rush. Huh? 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 Did he have too much corn? I don't know what go? that means. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> what does but that mean, gold rush? The gold rush. Apparently, his mission is to help people hate themselves less. And apparently, well, according that, to... That sounds good on paper, does but what, sound do, good. what does he mean by affinity, that? Affinity, he is an artful wordsmith, model, and self-love activist. Self-love activist? As soon as you hear the word mm. self-love activists, you know this guy is a freak. It's a bit I don't know about that, but okay. Well, anyway. I mean, like, self-love is a freak? Well, well would like, you rather he be like... Being like, oh, you should kill yourself. <laughs> well, no. You should kill yourself <laughs> now. Loathe, loathe yourself. But with the oh, uh, cultural emphasis, I mean, yeah, we all well, know like, what culturally speaking. Self obviously, means. you shouldn't hate yourself. Like, you should like you should like yourself to an extent. But like, I mean, at what so. point does that become narcissism? Yeah, is the question. There's extremes on both ends. Yeah, but uh, exactly. this this guy apparently is the first non-binary activist to make national TV. Now, what's okay. funny about that is the first TV 
station he made it on was Newsmax, which for those of you don't who don't know is a uh, conservative media platform. So oh. a non-binary <laughs> activist makes his first appearance on the See, first appearance conservatives of conservatives are progressive of any See, non-binary. They had, they had the first non-binary person on television. That's I mean, right. You gotta you gotta have viewpoints for everybody, right? Exactly. I, yeah. I guess. I guess. But this want to be a reliable news source. You gotta have everything. This guy has some weird viewpoints. I I saw a video from him the other day. Uh huh. Um, and he said, "quote This is only going in one direction." Speaking of you know, of course, the LGBTQ stuff. You will respect us. You can be upset, you can be angry, and you can think it's unfair. You can feel like we're stealing something from you, but it's still only going in one direction. You will respect us. Now, uh, he's, his voice is a lot more creepy than mine. I will say that. I will say that. But I want you to do a mental exercise with me for a minute okay. here. Sure. Uh, imagine, imagine a slave owner saying this to his slaves real quick. Whoa. Uh, Whoa, wait, that's All an right. extreme example. You yeah. will respect yeah, us. I mean, <laughs> you can be upset, you can be angry, but you're going to respect us. That's a very extreme example. I think he's just kind of dumb. He doesn't really know what he's saying. To those who can't see what just happened, Isaac just pulled out a whip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I did not. He said that to all of us. That was I directed at us. Um, oh, yeah. Um, but, you know, his, his fellow sexual perverts seem to enjoy telling the world how unrespected they are uh how oppressed they are while society literally worships them right huh? it's like huh? a politician telling his crowd of supporters that his crowd of supporters are oppressing them because culture nowadays puts so much emphasis on supporting gay people and being a quote ally yeah um and at the same time they seem to think that you know they're oppressed that these trans people well we, we're, we're so oppressed these white people still exist obviously we're oppressed uh-huh All right. and um you know, at, at this at the same time, this this Jeffrey Marsh guy, his tone is very condescending in his videos, and he he actually said that you know it's not important that you understand what we're about; it's important that you respect us and uh, support us. So he was talking specifically about being non-binary and how many so many people have questions about that. Uh huh. Yeah, um, I've got a pretty big question about that. Yeah, I, don't I know, know you, right? Yo, we should invite him on the invite him on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, invite so him, him on the podcast. Oh, yeah, that would be that would be kind of. That, that would be interesting to say the least. Well, I don't know if it'd be in person, but you know, a remote call. Would, I, I don't think I would trust not him have that house. man over to my house. <laughs> yeah. No, no, definitely not. No, but not, um, not with anyone under, you know, eighteen. And that. Yeah, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But the the thing is, this 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 poor man is so misled. Um, yeah, you know, he is demanding the the respect of the 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 public, which is really just a call for unbridled support. It's not just you know. I acknowledge that you are a human being. I am not going to be a jerk towards you, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, generally, you think of respect in, you know, you respect your pastor. Uh, you respect your grandpa. Of course. And he, I don't think he really even is asking for that kind of respect. Like, I can disagree with my grandpa and still respect him as a man. Yeah. You know, like this, this Jeffrey Marsh person seems to be begging for respect as in well you better agree well, yeah, with me he, because this is only to, going in one direction he wants direction. you to like pay attention to him and acknowledge his existence and like praise him for it he, yeah that's want, what he, he doesn't want me to respect him as a man <laughs> he wants me to respect, respect him as, as a, a, a as a whatever he was a non-binary as a whatever as a battery that no longer as works it. i don't know as, as a non-binary <laughs> for real i mean that's yeah <laughs> well that's not a, that's not very important lucas he said it's not important that you actually know what it it's is. not important that i know oh, what okay. it is just that i have to respect him that's right respect mm. him for what what did he do <laughs> what do i respect him for what i'm there, so confused yeah, well, he made it onto the national news that that's kind of interesting that's respect i guess it depends news. on how much you have to lower your standards to get on freaking national television <laughs> well that's though. that's so that's a good point that's so respectable because there are you know like there are serial killers that make it on the national news too so yeah, Obviously, for, he did something very reasons. respectable. <laughs> I have to respect serial killers for, you know, doing well, I mean, the thing yeah, they do. Yeah, doing it under the national So news. brave. Someone's so amazing. Like, no. Exactly. Like, only the best of people make it on national television. Let's putting be real. themselves and their lives on the line to what? do something well, that they want to do. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I think respect it so much. Politicians make it on the national news all the time, and I don't know if they're the best people, you know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. But this, this Jeffrey Marsh person also said that this is only going in one direction that you will respect us and you will bow the knee to trans ideology. I will not bow my knee before any but Jesus Christ. And sexual deformity. Amen, but, brother. Um, Amen. It says in the Bible, the gates of Hades will not prevail against my church. Truth. So this man is wrong. This man is wrong, gentlemen. I'm saying that of it's course. only going in one direction. <laughs> he is wrong. And uh, I, well, I know that 
there are many people in America who will stand up against this evil that is uh, LGBTQ ideology, and they will they will stand up against it. They will refuse to believe it, and that's encouraging. So, this topic, you know, made me think. This raises up an interesting question: How should we as Christians go about interacting with people like this? Like not just Jeffrey Marsh, just the whole greater right, part yes. of the LGBTQ community. Well, you know, I think that there is a, a spectrum of LGBTQ people. There are those who are, at the very best, confused about themselves. Yeah. And there are those who are openly rebelling against everything good and holy. Uh-huh. And, you know, the the people who are rebelling against those the, those things that which are, you know, good and holy, those are the people who send their children to drag shows, who mm-hmm. want to impression the minds of innocent youth into... Um, believing that you know all kinds of degeneracy is okay. Yeah, it's like and I honestly will, demonic behavior. I will never respect those people. Oh, really? I will not respect them. I will not encourage them in what they are doing. Well, um, good, yeah. I will not affirm what they are doing, but I will realize that you know I am also a sinner. Mm-hmm. It's not like my attitude is going to be well. I would I would never do that because it's very clear that what they are doing is simply what every man would do without some knowledge of a moral standard or of a a knowledge of God, right? Uh Uh, Um, You know, the heart... You have something to say? The heart is unfathomably wicked. It says that in the Bible. Yeah, but it doesn't mean everyone's going to go immediately go out and have gay sex. Well, it doesn't. Of course, it doesn't mean that. Exactly. Yeah, that's an bit... That's why you have to draw... This is You you say there's a spectrum of radicals, radical... Let's say radical uh, LGBTQ and then more conservative LGBTQ, if you want to call it that. I don't want to call it conservative. Right? Okay, sure. But regardless, there is a clear distinction between gay people and lesbians and people that think you can have sex with animals and people yeah. that think you can have sex with minors and people that think there's more than two genders. My respect kind of, like, I, I, I can respect people in the sense, okay, you're you're like like another human being created by God. But well, there's yeah. also, I'm yeah. not going to respect your ideology. Well, yeah, that no, says don't respect that there's their There's literally, actions. there's, there's, like even like even gay people are like leaps and bounds ahead of furries and minor attracted persons yeah. <laughs> and pedophiles and and non-binary people. I don't know. I mean, ringing. I don't even I don't even know where to fall in the gender because like at least I know what the furries want. I know what the pedophiles want. I have no idea what the heck the, the gender fluid <laughs> people want. Well, yeah, that's not important. Want? Apparently, what does it mean to be gender fluid? If they can't, I've never understood that. If they can't They're just kind of bored, so they important. think, oh yeah. I mean. Switching genders would be pretty interesting, huh? No. Switching so every just, other day, they, yeah. You know, they just kind of, yeah. I don't know about that one. I wouldn't do that. But then what's the? What do you think the point is? The point, well, at the end of the day, the point is to get away from the responsibilities of both genders. If you're a woman, your responsibility is to be, you know, to bear children, uh huh, to raise children. That's, and that's not saying that men can't do that. And men raise <laughs> 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 children. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying men can bear children? You know what? Yes. <laughs> wait. Why a not? Wait. Yo, wait a my, minute. My emoji list right here. Well, yeah, yeah. In, the emojis tell us. Yeah, they have children. You can get there's, pregnant. A, there's a pregnant man on there. <laughs> We're gonna not... put a pregnant man emoji in the title of this video. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm gonna get yeah. roasted in the comments. <laughs> I'm gonna get roasted. But I'm saying that men can help raise children. Obviously, okay, they yeah, can't yeah, yeah. have children, right? I yes, mean, yes, maybe they, they can. Who says that? No. Like, no. Yeah. They can't. They okay, can't. Fine. Fine. Isaac. Fine. They fine. They can't, Isaac. But at the end of the day, the, the hey, what if you're just really weird? What if you're just born kind of weird? You know, I mean, you got like, you got like both. <laughs> wait, oh, that that's, a whole that's very rare but at the end of the day the goal and also wait i want to say something about that real quick i think they're called intersex people once they hit puberty one of their genders will dominate the other yeah so like okay. when they're born with like both you know yeah genital yeah, yeah. types that'd be so w- weird one will once they hit puberty it's very clear whether they're a man or a woman right oh, okay well at the end of the day the goal is to re- escape the responsibility because you know if you want to identify as something or other you know you if you're if you're an athlete and a man and you want to escape the responsibility of actually having to perform well in order to win well you just identify as a woman caitlin jenner moment exactly (laughs) exactly you you identify as a woman you become a quote-unquote female athlete and you dominate the other women in everything you do Uh and you win a bunch of awards and get to feel real good because you get first place every game yeah and you know you change in the women's locker room and all that type of stuff right at the end of the day, your goal is just to escape whatever uh, responsibility God has assigned to you by giving you 
uh, the gender that you were born with, right? Yep. And uh, people will try to, you know, do all sorts of stuff to to get away from responsibility. They'll have crazy surgeries and take puberty blockers and whatever else. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, they're just trying to escape what they know God has called them to do. Exactly. They're working against the natural order of things that was set by God. You right. Think, you think God calls those people to do things? I mean, you said you said that these people are going against what God called them to do. And I think there's a distinction between they have a conscience telling them that there's one thing that they should be doing and God telling them to do something. Are you, is that the same thing? That you're well, I don't, I don't think that in most cases God is going to physically tell them like well you know you are a man or you are a woman well that's very rare but i mean i think that it's mm-hmm. clear enough in the bible that man was created god and woman uh yeah that man, man was created man, man i mean that's as the men whole and women. point of the it's, bible it's adam and right Eve, not adam and steve Come exactly, on. exactly. <laughs> ah, let's go. yeah so i i don't think that god physically talks to very many and trans i mean yeah but exactly like, but when when a person i'm not gonna speak for trans people but i when i think of someone choosing to become a different gender it's usually because they want to like god is i'm not saying that god tells them like, to become no, a different no, gender i'm god, telling them that he calls them to be the gender that he created them as no i don't think god i don't think god well, telling these people no 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 here's the thing these people don't know about god right that's the reason they're doing if they well that's well debatable. they might they might know that they're they might have the concept I mean, there are God churches in their that are that do affirm trans ideology. So there right, are definitely exactly. a lot yeah. of trans people who know. But who God, God is. is the last thing on their mind when they want to make a decision, right? True. Well, we d- we don't know what they're thinking in there because like they don't think I'm actively going to go against God because there is no God for them to go against. They are they are God. They choose. That's true. That's a good point. That I am God, so I can bend nature. I can do what I want as long as it's good for me. There is no higher authority well, like, that even I need if, to answer to. Yeah, well, even if it's, like, even if it, they're not, like, God isn't in their mind, they're still actively going against what he set in nature. Well, right, which and is I think it's pretty the point. Clear. I think what Isaac was trying to make, because God set out a specific set of, like, how things are supposed to work right. in nature. Like, well, and especially in America, I don't think that people who affirm trans ideology have that much of an excuse. It's not like we're living in a nation where, you know, the gospel has never been heard among these well, tribes that live out in the middle of nowhere. There are Christians, and there should be Christians, who are actively proclaiming the gospel to these people. And instead of, you know, acknowledging that, well, we messed up, we got to repent now, they're saying, no, you're wrong, go to hell. Are you talking about bringing trans people to Christ or talking about bringing trans people to reality? Both. Well, it's Okay, the well, thing, there's a the difference. It? because is there yeah. a difference? There is a difference because... You have to do a 180 and repent and never go back. That's the, kind of the point. If you, yeah, that's if you keep part doing of repentance. This stuff, yeah, yeah that's, how, that's how you know you're a Christian. Faith by works. If your works are still acting as the other gender, then yeah, that's, like that's, if, that's you, if you say you're a Christian and then keep being well, that's, gay. That's why, to... that's why Christ and reality are the same thing. Because if you become a Christian, you're not going to keep pretending to be a woman. Right. Yeah. But, but when you... There's a difference between making them a Christian and making them realize that they have a delusion, right? Because yeah, you, can't, you, it, can't, you can't use God to bring a trans person to their senses. You have to say— Who says you can't? Not that God can't do it, but there's a, there's a process they have to take. Well, if, yeah, if there's definitely if you come a process, at them, If yeah. you come at them and they're in a frame of mind, you have to acknowledge that they are in a completely different frame of mind than you. They are yeah, not thinking about God. That's pretty you clear, have to yeah. start with, there are two genders. You have to start with logic and facts, and then you can— Turn, spin logic and facts toward Christ because all logic and facts do lead to Christ because he is the ultimate yeah, logician, that's true. right? That is. So yeah. instead of skipping a couple like steps and like going right to Christ, it's not a, it's not wrong, it's not a sin to ev- evangelize, but they're not going to listen to you if you're not speaking sense, well, right? They're not going to listen to you even if they are if, even if well, you are speaking sense unless the Holy Spirit works well, in their hearts. What do you mean by that? I mean that it takes the work of the Holy Spirit to convict a person to turn right? to Christ. Well, but ultimately, does it ta- yeah. But does it like, take the work of the Holy Spirit? It can't, the Holy Spirit can cause people to come to their senses, not just to reality, but also to God. But does it require the Holy Spirit to make a trans person realize that what they're doing is possibly not a good idea? No, I, I do. I do not think that, you know, there are all kinds of people 
who are not necessarily Christian but have turned from the ridiculousness that is gender ideology. Yeah, they detransition without right. becoming Christian. So right. I think that you can logically prove, and I think that that is because you know God works. You know, everything logical does point to God. So I yeah. think that you can use logic to prove that you know LGBTQ radicalism is dumb and not how things are meant to be. For sure. But I I do not think that you need to prove to people that they are you know uh, not the that that LGBTQ ideology is wrong before you preach the gospel to them because the gospel is powerful enough on its own to convict and convert. Right, but think about it like this. If there's a... Okay, let's say you go to college. There's a trans person on campus. You're walking towards them. You okay. want to say something, not to be mean, but to evangelize. What do you say? Do you say you're a sinner? God wants you? Of course you wouldn't say... You wouldn't start with you're a sinner because that's dumb. Well, yeah, that's a good way to turn them away. It's a good way to turn yeah. them away that you don't want to yeah. do that, but you want to reason with them. Yeah. Well, the and the and if they're in a frame of mind where there is no God, trying to use God to bring them to reason is not going to work. You kind of see what I'm saying? Not that God so, can't use you to bring them to reason, but they're not going to listen to a message that they've been hearing all this time as negative to them, Right. Well, that's that's why you have to be very clear on me what the message is. The message is not you're a sinner, you have no hope, you're going to hell. It's well, you are looking for something, and that is because you are a sinner. And in order to find that something, you need to trust in Christ. That's a better idea. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. Because yeah. at the end of the day, what these people are looking for is the same thing that everyone wants. We all want to be happy at the end of the day. Yeah. We all but want to feel fulfilled. And what these people don't realize is that the only way to do that is to trust in Christ. Mm -hmm. And so you can you can say you're a sinner. That's not going to work. You're right. Instead, you need to say, look, this is this is what's happening. I can see that you're looking for something. You are trying to fulfill your heart by, I don't know, identifying as another gender or um, being gay, whatever. Um, but that's not the answer. The answer is Christ. And you, you can't portray it as, you know, a prosperity gospel where Christ solves all your problems. Yeah. But you do have to, you know, be sure that they are aware that the place that they're trying to get to is a place of joy and peace. And they're not going to find that unless they turn to Christ. And that, you know, you do have to be sure that they realize that the road they are on is sinful and leads to the opposite of joy and peace. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you're right. You can't just walk up to someone and say, hey, you're a sinner. Right. Especially yeah. if they well, already have the mindset of, well, you know, I am a sinner. Who cares? Because like, every person is different. Even these trans people, like, they're all gonna, all their minds work differently. Like, everybody's unique. So right. I think both of what you're saying is true in the sense that Bert, uh, Lucas is saying that you know you, you bring them you. to reason, and then that'll lead them to Christ. And then you're saying bring them to Christ, and that'll lead them to reason. Right. I think well, that reason I does think not reason does not always lead to Christ. That's the only problem yeah, that, I have. There are a lot of people in the world who are very reasonable people. I mean, if I don't know what kind of neighbors y'all have, but if you look at your neighbors, my neighbors are good people. I love my neighbors. Mm -hmm. They're very you know by an earthly standard, they're very reasonable people. Okay. Um, I am fairly certain that they have good moral standards and would not affirm the fact or you know the fact that is being pushed on us rather that a man can be a woman. But that does not believe that they mean that they believe in Christ. Uh huh. So reason does not always lead to the gospel, which is why you need to present the gospel, which is at the end of the day, it's the most important. It's well, more important than reason. Consider this. Even though reason plays into the gospel, of course. Consider this. Um, I don't want to be very Calvinist here, but I like to con I like to think of this as the far gone scale. Like how far gone are they? <laughs> is it easier to <laughs> convert a gay person? To Christianity or easier to convert a furry to Christianity I know that's not really your territory that's no no pun intended but is, <laughs> is our furries you're really like how would you go about that like where would you even start with a gay person you'd be like all right you have a natural desire and not all of our natural desires are good uh -huh. even if they feel good right but with a trans person that's not you. Yeah, you they've, have, take, you have to they've take taken extra, it a step further. They've taken like it they, a step further. They've gone it to the point to they're literally mutilating their bodies. Right. To do yeah. What they so want. you have to. There's a ve like gay people. They they listen to reason. Let's say that there's a gay person who thinks that you can't switch genders, and that's a very common thing. That, that is a real thing. Yes. yes yeah. That's why we have this far the far gone scale. How far gone are they? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But, but regardless, these. 
the LGBTQ, when you say LGBTQ, you lump everyone that's not straight into one group. Exactly. And you yeah. make them all sound like they're all crazy. And I want to be very specific here that only some people are crazy and a lot of people are actually reasonable. Well, that's uh-huh. that's exactly why reason does not is not the most important thing because you can be reasonable without believing the gospel. And I would I would say what you, what you're saying Lucas is that you know there are certain people who are a lot farther away from the gospel of Christ th- than others and that's true. But the thing is no matter how far away from you are from the gospel of Christ, the gospel of Christ can go farther. Right? Yeah. I mean you think about the story of Saul. Um you know, if you think that tweeting about how proud you are of being a sexual pervert is bad, well this man literally went and killed the disciples of Christ. Mm-hmm. You know, he killed those who followed Christ and he was happy about it. Uh-huh. He's like, "Look at me, I'm righteous because I kill people." Right? I hand him over to be tortured and you know, it's because it's because they're 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 he thought he was doing good, right? Uh-huh. And he was rejoicing in actually doing evil. And then you think about it, his whole life turned around and he became one of the uh, most influential, you know, uh, Christian figures ever. He is, you know, he is. When you think of people in the Bible, Paul is almost definitely going to come to mind. Right. So when you look at that, Paul had reason, but he didn't have Christ. And a lot of gay people, they have reason, but they don't have Christ. And that's what you're saying. Yeah. All it takes is Christ, and it will change their life in ways they didn't know that they could be yeah. this fulfilled. But that's what, when we're talking about trans people. They don't have Christ, but they also don't have reason. And you can't have one without the other, almost, in a sense. Yeah, and that's, yeah I agree that, with you. That yeah. is why right. you need to be sure that they know about Christ, because but if you reason, try is, to... reason is far less powerful than the gospel no, of Christ. No, but if you try Especially to... to people who do not listen to the gospel wait, wait, of but Christ. If you, but if you, get, if you tell them the message of Christ and they don't have reason, then they won't believe you. Because it takes a reasoning mind to fathom what Christ did. Right? But it still doesn't matter whether they have reason, because there are people who have reason who still don't believe in Christ. Well, no, it does yeah. matter. Wait, 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 wait. Reason, Lu- but... What Lucas is saying is that like people without reason, they won't be able to like properly comprehend what you're saying. They'll just shut you out because they just won't. Their their brain won't be able to like com- that. I'm making it sound like they're stupid, but you get. I'm trying to. Well, yeah, they're an ent- entirely different well, I'm ju- frame I'm of mind. I'm trying to say is that. And what I'm saying is that the gospel of Christ can penetrate that frame of mind and turn them around. Yeah, but will they understand what they're doing? If you give them Christ and then they're still trans, they're they're they have Christ but no reason. Do they really have Christ if they keep being trans? If all they know is that Christ doesn't want them to be trans, that's that's not reason. Well, yeah, that's not right? enough for them. They it's need to know. They need yeah. to know why. Why? Why he and doesn't want why them to be is trans reason and why he's important to them and why they should follow him. That's what they need to know, and they need reason in order to answer those questions or find the answer to those questions. Right, but as far as should you preach to them reason or should you preach to them the gospel of Christ, I would say you need to preach to them the gospel of Christ. Okay, reason you, on its own is very weak. Reason, reason is not an ideology. No, it's, it's yeah, exactly. It's, you use reason it's to a, get Christianity it, across. It's not Christianity or reason. Reason no, is not. what you use, and if you you kind of see you see where I'm going with well, it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think we need to look to the example of Paul again because he said. But that, did Paul have reason? Yeah, he said that he reasoned with them, but that's not all he did. It's not like he just debated them all day. Yeah. Uh-huh. Paul was so outspoken about the gospel of Christ that it almost got him killed a number of times. Okay. So you can preach reason. I'm not saying you can't preach reason. Well. But I'm saying that well, your priority should there's be There's no such the thing as well. I'm not saying there's no such thing, but I say preaching reason isn't the yeah. Because like, you're making it sound like reason is an ideology that's separate from the gospel, but it's not. That's... They, co- they come as a package, so to speak. Yeah, like you, you can, can have reason and not be a Christian, but you can't. Order... You can't. You can have reason without Christianity, but you can't have Christianity without reason or like true Christianity, right? Because like because yeah. like there are people out there who claim to believe in God, but they're they don't have reason. They just want to believe that there's, you know, a higher power. And I'm not saying that you should only have reason. And, and I'm, I'm not saying that reason alone will save them. I'm saying you need reason and Christianity. Yeah, you need to use reason to bring them to Christ. Because to try to have Christianity without reason is not not the gospel. It's not yeah, the gospel. That's, that's it's not just... where we disagree. I mean, it just sounded that you were, you know, saying that you need to well, what he's What he's saying, I think, is that you, you need gospel. to... You need to reason with them first so that they will have their minds open to you and the gospel. 
so that you reason instead of like just saying you're a sinner or like you know yeah Christ we always say, we always you say Christ. you're a sinner because that's how it sounds to them no matter how you say it if yeah, they no don't matter, have reason, no matter what like, you say to them, will just be as condemning as the next thing. If they don't have reason, well, you're yeah, a sinner. Because that's what they've been taught Christianity is, is just a bunch of judgmental people saying, you're a sinner and I'm not. That's what Christianity is to them from their perspective. No matter how you say it, no matter how gentle so, or mind, that's that's what you're doing. When you say anything other than you are a sinner, you are reasoning with them. Well, you are trying to get them to understand yeah. why they are not just a sinner, but why the yeah, gospel to, is important. You need to reason with them, show them that you are not what they have been taught that you are. The problem so I that have they will with trust that. you and like allow have, you to share the gospel with them. The problem I have person. with trying to reason with people in order to get them into a frame of mind where they would accept the gospel is that there are people who try and reason with LGBTQ folk all day, every day, right? There are people who try and debate them and show them where they're wrong, and they do not listen, okay? It, the, well, the goal is not to be reasonable so for an LGBTQ person. It's to shut the other that's side a, that's out. That's only what we see and happen. reason is not powerful enough on its own to convict. Well, yeah. Of course. Have you heard the phrase, anything I can reason you into, someone else can reason you out of? Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Reason alone won't do it. You have to have Christianity, but without reason, Christianity well, like, falls. Well, ultimately... You can't do anything to help them. It's ultimately the Holy Spirit well, uh, who needs course, to help them. But you're I, just the you're just the tool used by Christ to help them. I mean, it does sound to me as though Lucas is turning this into a step by step process. I don't know if that's well, like, what you mean to do, but you're saying that you need to reason with them to get them into a, the state I of think, mind where I you think can share for, the gospel with them. I think for us, it is a step by step process. Like there is like something we need. There are steps we need to take to help them. Well, what if you only get them to, to step Christ? one? Then that what is what very. If, what see, if step two is Christ, and you only get them to step one? Well, what do you? Well, step There's one is. Much you can do, well, then work to step two. Yeah, yeah. You got. That's the pro like, That's the thing. That's what I'm saying. There's a process. You got. You got to work through this, right? Yeah. Step one is just holy. In holy Spirit incites a. Exactly, and yeah. they immediately turn like, to Christ. Yeah, that's, not, that oh, that almost never happens because they're. That's why we're here on Earth. We have to evangelize. Exactly. Yeah. Calvin said, John Calvin said that only those, <laughs> those that are not saved, they won't be saved. It's predestination. If no one goes out and preaches, who's going to hear the word? It's it, well, that's uh, not it's up to the Holy Spirit to just go boom. That's not what we're arguing here, Lucas. I know, but I never kind of said is, that the Holy kind of Spirit is. is just going to go boom. You are taking a Calvinist standpoint. Well, maybe I'm well, taking well, an evangelist well, standpoint. The Holy Spirit needs to work inside of you before you can be saved. Like, no matter what. It doesn't matter what we do, whatever we say to a transgender person. If the Holy Spirit is not working inside them, or, like, trying to work inside them, we can't do anything. They won't listen to us. Well, yeah, and that if... That's why you need to share the gospel, and you know you can't just reason with them and then get them into the state of mind. You need to share the gospel, and give the Holy Spirit ground to work on. Mm -hmm. and the reason, ground for reason, the Holy Spirit to no, work on. No, reason, reason is not the ground that the Holy Spirit works it on. It kind of is. No, it is to reason, extent, yeah. reason, and Christianity. Obviously, they are the same thing. Reason. No, they are not. You have to have a distinction between reason and Christianity. You yourself said that reason. Well, yeah, without... they go hand in hand, right? They go hand in hand, and they work together. Reason points to Christianity is what I'm saying. Sometimes. I mean, if you take it on the right path, yes. There is a difference between reason and the absolute truth. And I know you won't disagree with that, but the... Well, how so? How so? Because reasoning, let's say that there are many I mean, atheists you said, you who said, reason. You said yourself that you know people who are reasonable, but they're not Christian. Exactly. Yes. You can have someone who is extremely reasonable and despite all of the avenues of thought that they go through they come to the conclusion that there is no god That's right not really reasonableness then i think it's well, very reasonable we need to define reason then exactly if you're saying that very not well reason. very well hey google <laughs> <laughs> i mean you can reason through things but if you're going to say that you know what is reason well reason it should always point to christ because at the end of the day, that's the only reasonable belief system. I mean, you can't just look at the world and say, well, I don't actually think it was created. I think it evolved. That's not reasonable when you really look at the facts and evidence that have been uh, given to us, right? I think that's truth. I think truth points to to God of and course, Christianity. Yeah, I don't I don't think reason always points. That's why you made the distinction. Well, that well, yeah, you, no, that's why you made the distinction. Reason is what is like a tool. It's neither inherently a tool is neither inherently good or bad. Right. It can be used both ways. It's a tool you use to 
define the truth. Reason, as defined by Oxford Dic uh, Dictionary's second definition, the power of the mind to think, understand, and form judgments by a process of logic. Okay, that's a yes. fair definition. That's a fair definition. Right? Yeah, it's you use reason as a tool to find the truth. And, you know, some people take that, they, they'll find something that they think is the truth, but isn't actually the truth, like evolution. Yeah. They think that's the truth, but it's not. And reason you need to have the tool of reason to find the truth, which is God and Christ. But, you know, just having reason will not lead you there because, you know, just having a hammer won't lead you to build a house. You need to actually know how to use it to get there. Multi-step process. Exactly. All right, JP, it would seem that we still have some disagreement here because neither Lucas or I are going to give up very easily. So let's give you the final word because you haven't said very much. Well, gay people are... They're kind of gay. Yeah! All right, folks. Woo! Woo! All, yeah! Right. All right, folks. We'll be back with segment two of the WRITS podcast in just a moment. Segment two of the WRITS podcast, everyone. Here we are. We have a fun topic for this segment. We're going to be talking about UFOs. With UFOs, our resident really? UFO expert, Lucas Burt. I'm actually they're not <laughs> UFOs anymore. They're UAPs. Oh, which no. Which stands for? Unidentified Aerial Phenomena. No Whoa. one cares. Yeah, they don't. I, I actually kind of care. We're going to call well, them UFOs for this, this podcast because no one knows what a UAP because is. Because you and we're never politically uneducated anyway. people know them as UFOs. <laughs> 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 All right. So, Will, what do you think about UFOs? UFOs? Well, you know, UFOs is often associated with aliens. And, you know, what I think about aliens is, you know, God created us as, you know, the ultimate being like he created us in his image no other animal right and you know the hollywood perception of aliens is um you know big green men in like super high tech stuff we haven't seen before kind of like walking things but i don't think off. that's true cuz what what are you guys mumbling about over there? No, absolutely. It caught you, caught you. No, all right, we okay, you caught us red-handed. We were going to make everything up along the way, but I guess We'll have to, you know, actually, you know, say some real things. Real things? Oh, real things about man. UFOs. Real things about UFOs. All right. So, Hollywood perception, UFOs, you know, little green men, lights yeah. in the sky. Well, the the general consensus, if you're a... If like, you're a I want to say if you're a Christian, but, like, Christians tend to stay away from this topic. Like, they don't, they don't well, even like, want to touch the UFOs. Yeah, they don't want to touch right, it. Right, yeah, because... I don't know if because like what you said because what I was trying to say was that you know we're the created in the image of God and like you know the logical you know animals we don't uh, run off of instinct like most other animals so if aliens do exist they're not like super highly intelligent green men they're just gonna be like some cows on another planet or something so or something. Or yeah, something. like kind of what you said. Cows will all will be that's left because they just keep taking them. They exactly, just, they, just, yeah. they, just <laughs> they just take the cows and they drop them off on like a planet and then leave. Yeah, our yeah. quote-unquote <laughs> extraterrestrial <laughs> life is really all the cows that have left us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the UFOs don't take them, they just leave. They just leave. They just leave. All right. What do you got to say then, uh, so, Lucas? As, yeah, kind of, I thought what you were kind of going towards, like Christians, they don't really like to talk about this kind of thing because in Genesis 1 1 there is no mention of God creating yeah. another race so it'd be kind of weird if Christians had to believe in these extraterrestrials and when we say extraterrestrial it means off planet from outer space mm -hmm. yada 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 so like you were saying it would have to be unintelligent life yeah it'd have to be just like some cows on another planet or something like cows right the intelligent life that god created was man he gave man yeah. a conscious and it would be some kind of bacteria yeah, living in a yeah, thermal we're, vent we're the only ones who are created in his image exactly yeah. so we have these grays which are like little gray dudes and then like you know, they abduct you and then they and then they mm -hmm. poke around inside you like a game of operation and they yeah. stick probes up your butt and you know yeah of course it's a whole mess the whole UFO culture is pretty much a big mess, and people that think that UFOs are extraterrestrial, it's almost a deterrent from God, right? Yeah. Because if God and Christianity is real, but we see all these UFOs in the sky every day, and the government acknowledges, oh, we have UFOs in the sky. Well, this is who cares what the government says? 
a lot of I people. A lot of people. I think that's very <laughs> important, Isaac. Not me. Well, you're not everybody, Isaac. Unfortunately, I'm not. Well, I hate to break it to you, but the UFOs are not Republican, and they're not Democrat, and they're not conservative, and they're Whoa. not liberals. And neither is Jesus. Did you ever think about that? Je- <laughs> Jesus isn't a Republican. Jesus, Jesus isn't a political. Jesus ideology. isn't even American, my guy. My gosh. Wow. But next you'll tell me that he wasn't white. Uh, oh my gosh. Isaac, I oh, hate to break it to you. That's a scary thought. Oh but no. Jesus wasn't white. He was gray. Whoa. <laughs> what? Yo. Yo, okay. But in all seriousness, people have to look at the UFOs and God and wonder, okay, which one is real? And the people that have delved into this subject that are Christians have come to the conclusion that they are the UFOs and aliens are not extraterrestrial, but rather interdimensional. Whoa. Interdimensional. You know what that means? Yes. yes. Of course. yes. I'm not dumb. All right. I'm going to explain it to you. Please, please elaborate. I'm going to explain to my one dumb viewer, you know who you are, that inter <laughs> is the prefix for between and dimensional refers to something that is on a plane of existence. All right. A separate plane of existence that plane. we cannot see. Right, exactly. So, we are in the, which dimension? The third. Yeah, third. let's go! Yay! You got it right. Good anyway, work. Good work, JP. Third dimension. We have length, width, depth. All that good, yeah. yummy stuff. Delicious. So, these UFOs, they don't, they, they can exist in the third dimension, and they can exist in another dimension. Right? They're yeah. interdimensional. They go between. They don't belong to one or the other. They go between. So, we kind of see this in the Bible as well. Right? Can you can you think of one example? I know I know someone will have one example of that could possibly be interpreted as interdimensional. No, I've heard Lucas's argument before, so I, I know what he is referring to, but I'm not going to say it because I oh, okay. will to figure it out. Figure it out. Uh, yeah, you don't have to figure it out. <laughs> figure it out, bro. All right, so wait, repeat your question real quick. Right, so interdimensional. Yeah. We, everything in the third dimension, we see the third dimension. What, where is possibly an instance in the Bible where Ooh. the fourth dimension, or we say fourth, but it's really just an extra dimension, something that we can't see? In so a plane that we can't see. Exactly. Or how could it be used? Mm, I'm thinking... Hmm... Thinking something to do with angels, probably. For sure, yes. Like Ange- anytime an angel appears, maybe. Did right, they yeah. That? They appear, and they, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring us back a little bit to dimensions, right? Okay. We live in the third dimension, length, width, and depth. Yeah. Now, let's say we removed one of those dimensions. Let's say height. We only have length and width, like this table that we're all. Yeah, we're all like you know feeling up yes. right now. This oh, nice yeah. wood oh, finish. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> regardless, let's say we had like a little stick person on here, right? Uh-huh. Now, this stick person can only see in two dimensions, length and width. Mm-hmm. Wrong. Wrong? You can only see in one. You can only see in two dimensions. You're in the third dimension. What? Cover what? an eye. How many dimensions do you see? Oh, my gosh. Everything two. is flat. Oh, wow. Whoa. Now, you just have two of those. So That's Whoa. interesting. You can only see... Two, so, so, we can only see two dimensions. The two-dimensional guy can only see one dimension. He can only see the line. Okay, so, how, wait, how wait we're in the third the dimension, the but we can only see two, is what you're saying. Yes. Okay, okay, gotcha. okay sure. I'm, I'm not very good on the math here. JP is more... Uh, Josiah, JP, Bert is more the physicist. <laughs> but um, <laughs> regardless, let's say we were to have another stick person on this table, right? If we picked one stick person... That would, that would equal two stick people, Lucas, yes, just so you know. People. I know you're not no, good at math. Three. Oh, whoa. No. What? <laughs> no, wait, no, you were right. I'm sorry. Of course Regardless, I'm right. <laughs> if we picked one stick figure up off of the table, where would where would he where would he go? We see in the third dimension, he's just increased in height, right? Yeah. He's only moved up on the height. His value's increased, right? However, for the guy still on the table, what's he see? He only sees in two dimensions. So he just sees his brother just Pop out of existence. Just, clip, just disappears. clip out of reality. All right. Who else has clipped out of reality? Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Jesus. Yo, Ooh. Jesus. <laughs> That's kind of crazy, right? That is crazy. So not only that, but we see Jesus not only teleport. Let's, let's say he appears in on the road to Capernaum and he disappears at the dinner table, right? Yeah. He appears and disappears, right? So... Next week, Easter. Yeah. I mean, we're recording on Palm Sunday. But Jesus, after three days of being dead in the tomb, 
Where'd he go? Wait, wait a second. How do you, how do you get through the wall of the tomb, right? Wall hacks. He clipped out. <laughs> wall hacks. <laughs> well, okay. So you see this, right? He he bypassed physical matter, walking through the door into the room with the disciples. How do you do that? Well, either he was confined to the third dimension and destroyed reality, or he was going between dimensions or was using an altered state of himself in the not in a, saying not saying he walked. He didn't have to walk. He didn't even have to walk. He just floated, right? Like he, he didn't, he, he he just didn't have to float or anything. He just could have gone to the R whatever dimension and then came to back, Peter. You know? Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> right. we see this kind of not not physics breaking, just a different level of understanding. It's not defying the laws of reality. It's just adding a new layer to the laws of reality. So we also see this with Philip and the and the what was it the the Ethiopian guy yeah yeah the Ethiopian guy I don't we don't want to use any um sensitive language yeah, on, on the podcast not, but no. Ethiopian guy baptizes him and then when the Ethiopian guy comes up out of the lake Philip's gone and where did where he reappear he reappeared in some city that starts with an A I don't know anyway I don't remember uh, yeah, we also see this in Genesis right yeah Enoch he walked with the Lord and then he went up with him that's, that's Just, all we don't get a whole lot of details <laughs> yeah. but right. And it's not that God can't whisk someone away by a supernatural means, but what if, to him, supernatural is just natural? I mean, yeah, that's huh? That's it why is. science exists. That's is possible, how yeah. he created the world to work, and he uses the nature he created to, you know, do his bidding and stuff. Right, and you think about it, there's a lot in this world that we can't see. Like, there is a whole... There are no, there are a number of colors that the human eye can see. Oh yeah, see. like we only have what three color receptors, whereas I, like yeah, a, I don't whereas like what is it? A lobster has like twelve. No way. No, no. Man, but if only I was a lobster. Th there's, <laughs> yeah. There are also frequencies that the human ear can't hear. There's a mm. lot that we as humans just do not have the capacity to pick up on. And that's just in the third dimension, right? right. Yeah, exactly. Like a, a fourth dimension or just another dimension beyond a lot of what we can understand in church that must be insane yeah like in church i think they'll call it the spiritual realm instead yeah. of extra dimension because you know pastor. yeah but like <laughs> when you're tying this back to ufos are you saying that like when we see what we perceive to see is like a ufo like aliens coming down to abduct cows or whatever that's like an angel moving from the spiritual dimension to the our dimension or something like that is right. that where you're going so yeah that's kind of what i'm going with i just i just want to preface what i'm about to say next by i don't know how cor if we have many validated uh reports about ufos abducting aliens and or no ufos <laughs> abducting the cows. oh no <laughs> the ufos are abducting the aliens no anyway. not the aliens <laughs> they're, they're abducting cows and crop circles <laughs> they're unexplained um they could be related i just don't see it uh, logically related yeah. in any way. So when we talk about a, a spiritual realm, right? Most of these UFOs, these confirmed reports, they're disappearing and reappearing out of thin air, right? Uh -huh. A lot of UFOs, they're they're disc shaped, right? The common UFO is disc shaped. It's got lights on it. Uh, they don't always have lights on them, but they're either disc shaped or pill shaped or ball shaped or they they they're made of light or they have light on them. And when you imagine UFO, what do you think? You're thinking the gray disc with yeah, the, like the blinking, flying saucer, the, with the, the gray blinking, the amusement lights. the amusement park ride. You know? Yeah, that, right, an amusement the saucer, park ride. Yeah, that's what you imagine. So when we when we say that the the flying saucer, it's a flying saucer, literally flying saucer, saucer yeah. shaped. So they. They break the laws of physics in ways that an actual physical thing would not be able to do that. And the the silly thing is is that the UFOs that are confirmed instances by the government they're picked up on radar. And like uh -huh. I think there's a really there's a really famous um I don't want to say famous but more well one of the more well known videos we have infrared camera footage of a UFO out like kind of off the coast of San Diego, California. And the infrared camera, you know what it does? It picks up heat. Yeah, it picks yeah, up yeah, heat. Yeah. Picks up heat. There was no heat coming off of this thing, which means there's no burned exhaust. There's no exhaust. No exa and no like life form or like physical life form. Right? No, nothing that we can see that has heat in it. And then you then you get into the argument that whatever life form is on board, maybe it doesn't need heat. Maybe it's not carbon based. Maybe yeah, it's but some other You could nature, make that argument, yeah. Right? So, anyway, 
when these UFOs are observed, they don't have any noise to them. Like they'll go supersonic speeds and there won't be any sonic boom. They'll they'll be hovering over the water and there's no rotor wash. There's no there's no water flying up. Like if you imagine a helicopter over over like a body of water, what's happening? All the yeah, air's going the down, the helicopter's like yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Water's going everywhere. Yeah. Not with UFOs. So they're picked up on radar, so they are in this dimension, but what explains their nature? And that's where people people have a natural tendency to, you know, believe that there is a higher being. Mm-hmm. And while some people look to God, other people look to UFOs and say that's our higher being, right? We have things to be gained from the UFOs, not necessarily our God, unfortunately. So how do we explain this this what this phenomenon right yeah yeah interdimensional and i don't i don't think that you can say that ufos are in the bible it, no it, I, I don't I wouldn't, I wouldn't say well that right much but, biblical evidence for ufos but they're well, at least not how we understand them. i mean exactly. this is this is all speculation here we don't actually know but you know i i understand the logic behind it and it makes sense yeah yeah absolutely i'm just saying you know, we can't be sure of it as it's not really in the Bible anywhere. It's not like the Bible says there are UFOs. Uh huh. Right. The Bible doesn't. Well, Bible yeah, it doesn't say directly that. say. It. Yeah, there are yeah. unidentified flying objects all the time. And that's the problem because in in churches, the pastors aren't like, "Oh, UFOs are real," because the ultimate truth is the Bible, and that's what they should be preaching. And because mm-hmm. UFO isn't in the Bible, that means that they shouldn't preach it. But that doesn't mean it isn't truth. It doesn't mean yeah. there's some truth to it, because clearly there is. There are clearly yeah, there, rationally minded is, people, yeah. and this clearly there is, is a, evidence of some weird phenomena happening with these unidentified flying objects. Right. So, could that be related to a spiritual dimension? I, you know, it's entirely possible. It does sound like a strong possibility to me, and it, that does make sense. Now that kind of explains their nature, but it doesn't explain what they are. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna read out of Ezekiel one. This is the English Standard Version. Okay. And I'll be starting in okay, Ezekiel one verse twelve. And each went. Or this is Ezekiel. Or maybe I, maybe I should maybe I should back up a bit. Yeah. Ezekiel one verse four. Context, As yeah. I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north. This is the prophet Ezekiel, uh, having a vision from God. Or a vision of heaven. And as I looked, behold, a stormy wind came out of the north and a great cloud with brightness around it and fire flashing forth continually. And in the midst of the fire, as if it were gleaming metal. And Mm. from the midst of it came the likeness of four living creatures. And this was their appearance. They had a human likeness, but each had four faces and each of them had four wings. Kind of crazy. We're looking at angels angels right now. Their legs were straight and the soles of their feet were like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like burnishing bronze. Under their wings, they had human hands, and the four, their faces and their wings thus. The wings touched each other. Each one of them went straight forward without turning as they went. For as the likeness of their faces, each had a human face. The four had the face of a lion. On the right side, four face of an ox, eagle, and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, What I want to pay attention to is the fact that he is describing his vision is a vision of angels clearly a supernatural being now each creature had two wings each which touched the wing of another while two covered their bodies and each went straight forward wherever the spirit would go they went without turning as they went for as as for the likeness of the living creatures their appearance was like burning coals of fire like the appearance of torches moving to and fro among the living creatures right Mm -hmm. So, skipping ahead to verse 15. Now, as I looked at the living creatures, the angels, I saw a wheel on the earth beside the living creatures, one for each of the four of them. As for the appearance of the wheels and their construction, their appearance was like the gleaming of beryl, and the four had the same likeness, their appearance and construction being, as it were, a wheel within a wheel. You've heard that, right? Yeah. A wheel within a wheel. Ooh. Right, so you already you already see where yeah, this I is see, going. Yeah, I see I see where you're going with this. And this, you have to be very careful here. You can't take things that are happening now on Earth and say, "Oh, where is this in the Bible?" Yeah, because you can't fit 
what's happening out here to fit the meaning of the Bible. You got to take what's in the Bible. Yeah, you have to do it the, yeah, the other way, way around. Yeah. Eisegesis versus exegesis. Have you heard of this? Say that again. Do you know the concepts of eisegesis and exegesis? Not no. not Jesus, J E S U S, but Jesus, J no G E S I S. I have not heard about that before. So eisegesis is taking your context and kind of framing okay. the Bible around that, and exegesis is taking what's what's in the Bible out and applying what's outside to that. They're similar, but they are very the, differently patterned. Yeah, right? very differently applied to life. And so, continuing, uh, as for the appearance of the wheels, their appearance and construction being, as it were, a wheel within a wheel. When they went, they went in any of their four directions without turning as they went. Ooh. They're not turning, right? And their rims were tall and awesome, and the rims of all four were full of eyes all around. Uh-huh. So... I don't know if anyone has seen the modern depictions of a biblically yeah, accurate a biblically angel. Accurate You've angel. got a wheel within a wheel. Yep. Spinning around with human eyes, eyes. Eyes all over it. Yeah. Human eyes all over it. And it's got wings and the wings are touching. But the wings were describing the beings. Now, yeah. wherever the spirit wanted to go, the wheels went and the wheels rose along with them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. When those went, these went. When those stood, these stood. And when those rose from the earth, the wheels rose along with them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. Right? Wow. So now this is when we have to be careful, right? Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> to me, and this is my opinion, is not the objective truth, of course. But when I read this from the Bible... There is a very real and rational explanation for what is being read here. And despite people from the time Ezekiel wrote this to, let's say, 1920, uh -huh. I think, there was no way to interpret this into their world. There was no way to look at this scripture and think, this explains what's happening in my world. I mean— Now we have— I, I'm just trying to say we don't know for sure. We don't they, know for they, sure. They could have seen, like, something— like a UFO. Right, and that's like, the funny thing. You, yeah. you, you you can go back and you can look, and there are historical accounts of people all throughout history seeing unidentified flying objects. In the in the times of the Greeks and the Romans, they were considered shields, right? Like yeah. they say, oh, there's shields in the sky. And they, they point at that. I think there's also um, uh -huh. many accounts of, or maybe, maybe a couple accounts. I don't want to say many, but there are at least a few accounts of like the Franks uh, versus another tribe, and they were in a battle, and there were these hovering discs over the fields. And we know that this isn't just made up history because the tribes were actually scared of the wheels. Like, yeah. it, it altered the direction of the fighting. They didn't know what to do. So there was. Yeah, I'd be still. scared too if just a yeah, flying cool wheel just popped out of nowhere. So, UFOs right. aren't some new thing. Yeah. Aliens didn't get here like 50 years ago. This has been going on throughout all of human history in the same way that Satan has been trying to deceive uh -huh. humans throughout human history for as long as we've been around. Exactly. Yeah. Right? What's Satan's ultimate goal? To bring as many people down to hell with him. Exactly. It's our job as Christians to bring as many people with us to heaven as exactly, possible. Exactly, yeah. Satan, he knows how the story ends for him. He does, yeah. His job is to take everyone down with him, right? Mm -hmm. And what better way to deceive people than to make them think, that these things in the sky, they're a higher power. They're what they should be looking to. Yeah. They're another, they're another idol. And gotcha. that's, that's another problem with logical thinking, right? People that don't know God, they'll look at these things in the sky and they'll, and think, they'll say, oh, this another is, species from another planet is coming to visit us. This is the higher power. This, yeah. is, this is what we've been waiting for. Regardless, as we read this verse, we see... That the spirits, these wheels within wheels with eyes on the side, when the spirits move, the the wheels within wheels move along with them. It's We don't know what the nature of these things are. It's clearly a heavenly or supernatural yeah, technology. Angel, I think they're called thrones, that specific type of angel. Yes, I, yeah, you are right. Thrones. But it's some kind of, let's say, transportation. Wherever they go, they go with them. Whether it's required or not, we don't even know. We don't know the nature of this. Yeah, we don't know what the angel's purpose is. Yeah, we don't know what the 
spiritual technologies. Yeah. I would like to – so you would say these – wheels within wheels they are angels and they're called thrones yeah. i would argue that they are vessels or transportation devices they themselves are not like angels because some sort of heavenly version of like a plane or something kind of but kind of. that's the thing we don't know what they're yeah we, d- we don't know we only have a description that's so inspiring to me to just hear about what little we know about heaven but like there's so much going on up there and there's so much depth to how angels work and like how God works and how like the dimensions work. You know that that does raise a question for me because if they're shuttles for you know angels like a plane or whatever, uh, I do have to wonder if angels have to go through the TSA. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I have a feeling they don't, but but yeah, so they're immune. Eli- yeah, probably. Eli- Ezekiel is having a vision of heaven. These are angels. The angel, yeah. in my opinion, the angels are the things with four faces and touching wings, and yeah. the angels' vessels or what they use to get around are the wheels within wheels with eyes. Maybe what Ezekiel was seeing was a UFO, and he described the wheels within wheels with many blinking lights as eyes. For all he knew, yeah. that's what he was looking at. But of course, we have to take what's in the bible and bring it out instead of trying to cram our narrative yeah, yeah, of what's yeah. going on in because like those probably weren't like blinking lights they're just it's probably some sort of heavenly substance that we just can't comprehend with our human minds right and blinking lights it's more of a hollywood thing anyway yeah exactly so. and for like ezekiel the closest thing he can compare like shining balls or whatever he saw yeah. was eyes yeah like, yeah all, like all those all those faces on the on the angels or whatever like they're they don't they don't obviously look exactly like lions. They're just like lions. It's the best thing he could use to describe yeah, like, them. It, it probably was undescribable. He was probably like racking his brain, like, how do I write down yeah, what yeah, I exactly, saw exactly. onto paper so that people will understand what I'm seeing? Right. Because like, I, I think angels are just like so amazing and like we, you, full of glory yeah. that you can't even comprehend what they look yeah, like. Yeah, there's a reason why every time that yeah. someone appears, they appears, have to say, "Do not, do be, not be afraid. Be not, be not afraid. Be not yeah. afraid, guys. Yeah, they're not some dude with wings. They are. They're pretty fucking terrifying. Yeah. yeah. Regardless, uh, the spirit moves. The spirit of the the angel or the creature, or the angel, is in the wheel, and they move along with each other. Uh-huh. So, whether the spirit is the angel. If it says the spirit of the angel is in the wheel, I don't it, – it to me, it seems a little redundant. Like, why would he say that the spirit is in the wheel and not the spirit was the yeah. wheel, right? I mean, of course, I'm reading English Standard Version, which I think is, is pretty accurate, but I don't have a – it's not it's not whatever Aramaic or Hebrew w- yeah. that he wrote in. So we don't know exactly what that word meant in that context. But regardless, we have these things, and what do we know about – angels at some point before the fall of man lucifer took or before he was lucifer no no he was lucifer one he was, he was yeah, in yeah. heaven <laughs> and then he became satan once he fell the name we attribute to him in heaven is lucifer and when he fell he took angels with a him. third of the angels debatable yes. but what? yeah it's, doesn't it say in the bible a third of them i think it, it's something along those lines but there's a, there's a lot to go in there yeah, i'm yeah. not gonna touch yeah, that right yeah. now. i'm not gonna touch that right now <laughs> that's a we whole that's a whole day. other yeah. topic <laughs> i think it might have been it could have been up to more than it's i'll get we'll, we'll get into we'll, that later we'll get on it regardless yeah, we don't need to talk about that right now we know that if we if we think of these living creatures or these these wheels within wheels as vessels that means that they are not good or bad they are just a heavenly technology interesting right so that means that angels that fell and became not angels i want to let's Let's refer, let's refer to them as fallen angels. When fallen angels fell, yeah. they took their extra-dimensional technology with them because why wouldn't they? Wherever the wheels go, they go. Yeah. When they go up from the earth and down from the earth, so do the wheels. Within wheel, right? Interesting. So, let's – like Satan's job is the deceit of man. That's yeah. His, that's, that's his main purpose. So – His goal. His ultimate his, goal. His ultimate goal. His... So why wouldn't yeah. he employ the use of another idol, which is just this basic technology to him? He's like, oh, look at this. Interesting. These, I'm going to dangle this technology. Like, yeah, he knows that hu- we humans, like, we don't know what those are. We will ne- I don't think we'll ever, like... Fully grasp it, yeah, right? N- even, like, no matter how long we have left on this planet, I don't think humans will ever come close to, like, designing something like whatever is described there. Yeah, Satan's dangling a technology in front of our eyes that we covet. We want to be like Yeah, God. exactly. And that's that's his deceit. 
So to summarize, what you're saying is like obviously you don't know if this is the absolute truth. This is just of your course theory. Not. This isn't from what you've studied. This is a way to interpret the Bible. Yeah, yeah you got it from a YouTube video one day. That's how I studied. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. But I've done a little to, bit more than one To summarize your point YouTube is like video. what you're trying to say is UFOs as we like see them, the UFOs that we see on Earth are like Satan using heavenly technology to deceive us. Spiritual technology. Spiritual technology. Because yes. it is no longer extra dimensional. Yeah, because spiritual realm, extra dimensional. Yeah, extra dimensional. If you say spiritual technology, it sounds a little strange. When, yeah. Right? Like, if spiritual technology, in, like, imagine a pastor saying spiritual technology. <laughs> Come like, on, like, that'd like, be kind of cool. My crystal be... ball, it's spiritual technology. <laughs> yeah. But usually when spiritual is referred to in church, it's more of a positive thing. Like yeah. Like the Holy Spirit. The Holy instead Spirit. Instead yeah. of extra dimensional or a heavenly realm. Uh huh. I don't know. It's the ambiguation is insane. Yeah, like, but I get what you're a, saying. You're right. You're, yeah. This is just your interpretation of the Bible, and you know, I think there's a lot of truth to what you're saying. There, truth. Yes. Oh, truth. truth but right. A lot of reason to what I'm saying. A lot of reason. Right. As previously truth is stated, a strong word, as yeah. previously stated, reasoning is the tool we use to get to truth. Yeah. And the truth always points to Jesus Christ. To, yeah. And like, is this the right? truth? We are pro- we probably won't know until we get to heaven. And I'm sure something that you do agree with is that the under the biblical understanding, where our worldview, the biblical worldview, is the truth. Yeah. And because it's the truth, everything will make more sense. Yes, if that's you're looking, true. If you're looking from like an evolutionary standpoint, you have to finagle and finagle. Around oh, you everything. have to like reach so much, grasp at so yeah, many yeah, straws. Yeah. You have to zigzag around so many logic gates, and it's just honestly. If you have a biblical worldview, things will just make sense. They'll just make sense, yeah. Right? Generally speaking, yes. Sometimes sometimes things don't make sense, but that's just because we're human. Well, no, yeah. but that's the whole point, right? Because right. God— and Someday those like, things oh, will be made clear to us, yeah. Right, because Philip disappeared and he reappeared. Yeah. That doesn't make any sense. What? That, what? Well, like from a worldly perspective, yeah, that doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make sense. any yeah. sense. But a then human as just can't as, disappear and reappear. And then as will. soon as you have this— Extra dimensional perspective grounded in the Bible. And it, it all makes becomes sense. Clear. It makes sense. Yeah. It's no longer a crazy miracle. It's just God doing what God does. Exactly, yeah. So Dang, that was awesome. That was a very compelling argument on the existence of UFOs, Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think it's indebatable whether or not they exist or not. It's the word is indubitable. Indu indubitably? Indubitably. 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 All right, folks. Thank you so much for listening to episode six of the W Ritz podcast. Will and I will be back soon with another one. But before yes. we leave, we want to give a shout out to one of our very special listeners. Yes. You know who you are. Oh, yeah. Thank you so we much for you. listening <laughs> in. Shit. Big round of applause Big for round this of man. Applause. This oh, man we love you. Talking about. we love you. We love you. Too. Too. <laughs> oh, no one knows who we're talking about? Huh? Oh, I know who what we're talking mean? about. No, and they knew who we're know. talking they, about. They yeah, know exactly what we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. We're talking about all of you. All right, bye.